everybody welcome to my channel in today's video I am going to teach you two stencil techniques you really must try and they both use the same stencil this is called texture wall and it comes from the crafters workshop I'm going to use this stencil to should give you two techniques actually a third one sneaks in so let's get started Here's a sneak peek of the two pages that I'm going to create. The first technique is called Gesso Resist. Recently, I tried this technique. It was a fail because I forgot a few things. So I'm determined to get this to work. So what you need is gesso. Now my page is raw. There is no gel medium on it. There is nothing on it. It is raw mixed media paper. And I'm going to use this texture wall stencil. I love all the motifs that are on here, all the patterns. There's just so much bang for buck with this stencil, which is why I chose it to do multiple stencil techniques. It's very, very versatile. And this is the kind of stencil that you want to find. So I decide which way I want it to go, which patterns I want at the top, on the bottom. And then because I don't want the stencil to move around, I am taping it down to my tabletop. You do what you need to to make life easy. Now I'm just putting white gesso on my glass palette here. And then I'm going to apply it with a makeup sponge. Now I'm patting off and I'm going relatively slowly, carefully. Now it's white on white, so you really can't see the gesso showing up. Now key here with the gesso resist is that you need to have raw paper. If you have gel medium on it because you've glued something else down, it is not going to allow you to successfully do the gesso resist. So the parts where the plastic of the stencil is are going to remain raw paper and the open parts where I'm putting the gesso, they're getting covered in gesso and that is going to make a bit of a resist. So it's gonna take the two different papers, the raw paper plus what has gesso on it, are going to take the color medium differently. And that's going to give us the gesso resist look. So I'm putting a couple coats of the gesso on. And I'm not using a heat tool when the stencil's on there because you'll measure, you'll melt your stencil. Once it's dry and you've put a couple coats, you're gonna take the stencil off and you can see a little bit of the gesso. There's an awful lot of pattern on there. Now I've covered the entire thing using the whole stencil because I love this stencil, but you could just use gesso resist on part of it. on three sections of the stencil. You could use different stencils if you wanted to. So I'm giving this a super dry before I move on to the next step. So you need a couple baby wipes and you need whatever color paint you're going to put on. Now I've chosen to use quinacridone magenta, bright aqua, and Prussian blue, I believe. And I'm just mixing them wet on wet. And right off the bat, you can see how the raw paper and the gessoed areas are taking the paint differently. In fact, you can see some of the pattern already on there without us wiping it off. This is one of those techniques where we're gonna use the baby wipe and we're going to add interest to our background by subtracting, by actually taking off paint. Now I'm waiting, I'm putting color throughout the whole page. You could do half of it and then use the baby wipe to wipe it off. Or you could do as I do and do the whole page. Depends how fast you work, but you don't want the paint to dry completely because it will be more difficult to get the, to remove it. Now this looks like a hot mess and that is okay because we are going to take advantage of the fact that the gesso is resisting the color medium. So when I take the baby wipe, you can see I'm wiping off the color 
that is on top of the gesso. It's kind of sealed the paper a little bit and it's allowing us to lift off the paint. Now you can see I'm going to end up needing another baby wipe. Now you can remove as much of the paint off of the gessoed areas as you like or as little and you'll get varying degrees of color on it. Now you can press quite hard. Now remember the areas, the open areas have the gesso so they will resist the paint and you'll be able to lift off as much of the color as you want. You can take it right down to as white as you can or you can leave a coat of color. The areas that have the stencil underneath them were raw paper and that paint is not going to lift. It's soaked into the paint. So this takes a little bit of time because of course I have a lot of gesso here and a lot of paint to lift. This gives a very soft color, kind of more pastel because you're bringing out the white of the gesso. You can wet your baby wipe, cut, get, turn it so you have a cleaner area. Put a little muscle into it and lift off the color on top of the gessoed area. If you want to make this a little faster, you can use a little rubbing alcohol on your baby wipe and that just lifts it all quicker. So if it's dried a little bit or you want to bring it a little too more white, you can use rubbing alcohol. And this container I got at Dollar Tree, it's perfect for holding my rubbing alcohol to, to use in this way. Now I'm maximizing the use of this stencil. It has so many different patterns on it that I didn't need to use more than one stencil. So again, the areas that were under the stencil material, that's raw paper and that you will not be able to lift. So you get the darker areas and then where the gesso is, you're going to get varying levels. So I've decided I'm going to use one of my Julie Netting dolls. I've had these stamped out. When I bring out the stamping platform, I stamp out multiples and then I have them in my stash. And then I'm using a sentiment from my Grateful, Thankful, Blessed sentiment pack. So you see, I've used that stencil. I've used one technique and I have a really interesting background because of the technique I chose and because of the type of stencil. And I like that when you d can do less because your products are doing more. And then I decide, you know what? I'm gonna throw in another technique. I'm gonna stamp through the stencil. This stencil is also perfect for that because it has these wide open spaces where if I use a smaller scale stamp, like a script stamp or a dot stamp, honeycomb stamp, I can stamp through those open areas. So I'm just putting my stencil back in place, lining it up, and then I'm going to select some stamps. Here's the dot stamp and I'm using the Prussian blue and I'm just stamping through the stencil, adding a little bit more interest into the background. And there we have it. Now I'm looking for another stamp and I think my script stamp is the right scale. It'll fit in some of the open areas. This time I'm using my archival ink in black 
and I'm putting some script through there that's only going to be in the open areas, in the bigger open areas. Oh, my stencil's shifted a little bit. I'm going to put some script stamp up here as well. This was kind of a crosshatch pattern that I'm putting through here. And it's just adding layers of interest to my background. There is a link in my description box below to the TCW Shopify store where you can get this texture wall stencil. This is a 12 inch by 12 inch. Now I'm using the dot stamp here and I'm putting white through. I love to fill my stash with products, stencils that have a lot of versatility that you can use for different things. This stamp as well, and I'm using white acrylic paint. And of course, if I've used acrylic paint on my stamps, I spray them with the Murphy's oil soap and mixture and wash them immediately so that they don't get built up with this. Then I decide to do some outline work on the area. So I grab my white paint that's in a fine line applicator bottle and I'm just basically doodling. You could use your Posca pen, your white Posca pen, or your Unibill single signal if that's what you have. This is acrylic paint that has been thinned down. I just find it faster and it's permanent, whereas some of the other ways might not be permanent. And when I started outlining, when I grabbed my fine line applicator bottle, I wasn't sure how much doodling I was going to do. Inevitably, I end up doing more than I think. Just to see, seems to be par for the course. Now, both of these pages took about an hour and a half to do. I have sped up parts of the videos, it just uploads faster, and a lot of it's repetition. And as long as you know the steps, I think you don't need to sit here for an hour. If you like my technique videos and would like to see more of them where I feature different stencil techniques, please let me know in the comment section below always like to hear what people would like to see on my channel. And as much as possible, if I have that skill set, I'm quite willing to comply. Adding all this doodling around the stenciled areas really is lightening the page. It's also bringing out the pattern all the more. And let me tell you, my using the fine line applicator, it is not perfect. The scribbles or the outlining isn't exactly always where it needs to be. Sometimes it wibbles and wobbles. I just have learned to embrace the imperfections of it. But I don't want you to think that it's so perfect when I've done it. Now I'm going to edge my page by shading with black acrylic paint around it. This just kind of frames the page and is, you know, typical finishing 101 for me.
And then I just am adding a little bit of shading on the stenciling as well. And you can do as little or as much of this as you see fit. Now I've placed my Julie Nutting doll in place where I want her and then my sentiments and I'm just gluing all those things, all those elements down with my fluid matte medium. Everything underneath this is permanent. It's acrylic paint. So it is not going to move when I put wet medium on top. I love the soft colors in the background that this gesso resist technique gives. It's kind of like you get that ghosting effect a little bit or the effect of, of stenciling or stamping with white. Now I'm just painting my Julie Nutting doll. It has a coat of matte medium on top of it. It's turned that paper into non-porous surface. So the paint doesn't soak into the paper, doesn't pill the paper. I'm painting the dress, the Prussian blue. That's, it's going to be a darker version of the Prussian blue that's in the background. I could have gone with the magenta. I could have gone with the aqua, but I did not want to introduce another color. I wanted to just keep everything cohesive. And then for the bodice of the dress, I decided to go with the aqua. But again, it could have been the magenta color if I had wanted. So after getting that completely dry, because I always stop in between, I decided to do her hair <clears throat> in a... Deep yellow, I like how the yellow pops off the colors in the background. A dark brown would have popped on this background as well. So if you don't have Julie Nutting dolls and you're looking for a good large stamp that you can use on lots of things, the Julie Nutting dolls really fit that bill. So I take my black Posca pen and I'm just outlining the sentiments. This makes them stand out a little bit more and gives me the look that I'm looking for. You can do as little or as much shading or outlining as you want. It really is a, you know, your own personal preference. The Posca pens are permanent once they're completely dry. Although you do uh, have some ability to um, remove them while they before they're completely dry. I wanted a little bit more of a shading type of effect around the sentiment, so I come in with more shading in my angle brush using my shading technique that's called floating acrylics. I do have a video, so if you search for shading, in my when you're in my channel you'll find that shading tutorial and it's a really good basic one to have because you're going to shade on every page then i come in and some of the bottle bubbles i'm giving a little bit more shading just to make those bubbles and those shapes stand out but i could have left it the way it was there's nothing saying i needed to do this it's just i get going and i go oh, what would happen if i did this or what else can i do here And there is the finished first page using that stencil. I like the line work that I have that I did with the fine line applicator. I like how the gesso resist looked, made it an interesting background. It looks very texturized. And that's a win. So I hope you try the gesso resist technique remembering the lessons that i've learned and shared along the way so this one is the stained glass technique i also called it um reversing the stencil and to do that i am going to paint the raw page 
completely black. Now I'm using black gesso. It's very matte, as in not shiny. And I can know I can use it and get great coverage with one coat. You can use black acrylic paint. Just know that you might need to put a second coat on to get that level of coverage that you want. So I'm putting on the stencil here and I'm taping it down just to make sure that it doesn't, doesn't move on me. I want that stencil to stay down for the entire duration of what I'm doing. And in this one, it's actually staying on the page longer. So use a little bit of painter's tape. Now I'm taking white gesso and putting it through. Now, whatever is the open part of the stencil is getting white on it. And then that's where I'm going to put the color to get that stained glass effect. So everything where this actual plastic is of the stencil, that will remain black and it's gonna look like the lead of stained glass picture window. Hence the name stained glass of technique. Now, when you're putting on the white gesso, what you'll notice is that it doesn't get give great opaque coverage. So you might have to go over it a second or a third time. Don't try to do too much. Don't try to speed up the process by getting more paint on your makeup sponge. All that's gonna happen there is it gonna seep under the stencil. You need a little bit of paint on it. I'm dabbing off and do two coats or three coats. And because we're putting two coats or multiple coats here of the white gesso, that's the reason I wanted to make sure that I taped it down so it didn't move in between. Now you could do this effect on just part of the background. You don't have to do it for a whole background. I don't know that I've ever done it for just part of the background. Now I grab some bright colors from yellow to orange to quinacridone magenta, a purple, a, a Prussian blue. And I am going to add the color. Now I did dry in between. I let it dry. I did not use my heat tool because of course my stencil is sitting on that and I don't want to melt my stencil. So this is where you have to find some patience. If I could find patience, you can too. And then I'm putting the colors, one color after another, blending it wet into wet so that you get maybe a couple different um tones or shades of colors. So I have the green or, you know, and then the yellow, kind of a green yellow in between. But to get those blends, you got to work fast. But again, you do not want to put too much paint on the makeup sponge because it's just going to seep underneath. So here I'm using the magenta next to the yellow, which gives me an orange path. Now I'm kind of going, you know, stripes going down across the pattern, across the stencil. You can do this randomly and mix it. And you can apply the color however you want. So you can follow all the same steps and add your own variations. So this stencil again works well. It has some big open spaces. So a lot of that color comes. It has the narrow lines for the letting of my faux stained glass. I absolutely adore this technique. It is so showy. When you get to the end and you are able to pull off the stencil, it's always like, it just always looks so good because you've got those brights on with black. There's so much contrast and energy in the colors that you use, which begs the thing, can you put neutral colors through it? Yes. You could do the same kind of effect using any colors. It's just gonna 
I like the bright and bold effect that it has, but I've never done neutrals. So again, you can get so many different looks using one technique. Love the bright, bright colors that, that are here. I deepened the blue there. Wasn't too happy with the light blue permanent, so I put a, uh, I think it's green blue. And then I'm adding green to the end. So I started with green and I ended with green. And in my mind, it just made it all flow a little bit more. And it helps your eye go from the left side to the right side because you've got some continuity there, some similarities. Now you can go back and deepen the colors all you want. And when you're good, this is the reveal. I love it. So much color, so much fun using a stencil and getting that stained glass effect. Then I grab some flowers from my printable packs here and I'm just going to put them on there. And I decided I'm going to just use black and white flowers because I've got this beautiful, colorful background. I don't want to compete with it. I just want to make a happy page. I want to find joy in the ordinary and plain. You don't have to overthink it. But I could have put a Julie Nutting doll here. I could have put a magazine girl. I could have put lots of different things. So the focal image, you know, isn't limited to what I view. So you don't don't feel that you need to have exactly what I have to do a similar page. So this sentiment comes from my choosing joy sentiment pack. Joy is my word of the year. And that sentiment pack is available at ninniesnapkins.com. It's a digital download. Uh, I give you links to showing you how to shrink it, how to blow it up, um, so that you can make it the size that fits whatever substrate you're working on. I'm edging the page with the black, and that's just, again, just finishing it off. It's tying in with the black of the, um, the stained glass technique. Even the sentiment that I used has bigger, bolder, darker black letters, and that ties in. You're really playing up that contrast. Grab my fine line applicator. This time it's in black. And I am doodling with it on this doodle flower. It had been Xerox or photocopied. And it wasn't as opaque black as the background. And I wanted it to be. So I'm going over that line make, on these doodle flowers and the inside of the, of the flower. It's a bit of work, but you can see the ones on the right, left hand side I haven't done yet. They don't stand out as much as the three on the top on the right hand side that I've already done. Now I could have used my Posca pan, but it, my tip is a little wider. I prefer this look. It also gives a little bit of dimension. It doesn't lie exactly flat. What do I have in this fine line applicator bottle again? It is black acrylic paint that I have thinned down. I mix up, you know, I don't even think a quarter of the tube with a little bit of water and I shake it up and I test it. The paint should come out with a very little amount of pressure. I shouldn't have to squeeze too hard on the bottle, but it shouldn't come out without squeezing. So it's a little bit of put the paint in, add a little water, see. Add a little bit more water, see. Add a little bit more till you get that right texture. But do not mix up an entire bottle of it. It, a little goes a long way, and if it, I've not had any problem with it um, clogging or drying up inside for a very long time. Like I, 
months and years go by and it's still good. You can also do a search on my channel for the fine line applicator bottle. I show when I did clean it out and I think I show how I mix and measure the paint and put it in to give you if you want a visual of that. It took me a long lot, long while to actually buy the fine line applicator bottles, but they are so, so, so worth it. And then I'm shading with black acrylic paint, my angle brush, around the flowers. Again, I want them to stand out even more. And giving that shading around them, again, another very necessary step. Everything really adds to the end. A lot of times people post in my Facebook group and on other Facebook groups, you know, like, here's my page. It seems to be missing something. And I think what it's missing sometimes is contrast. It's missing that shading step, that um, edging the page, those finishing things that really take the page from, okay, it's done to, oh, wow, it looks great. Using that stained glass effect and even that stencil, that would make a nice cover for a journal for, you know, then I want, with the, all those jewel tones and bright colors, I splattered with gold. The gold really stands up against it. You know, we all need a little bling. So go, find joy in the ordinary. Try the stained glass technique. Try the re re removing or uh, gesso resist. Both are winning techniques that you can get a lot of use of in your art journal and mixed media projects. Which one do you like the best? Which technique are you going to use? Let me know in the comment section.